What does a pretty landscape plant have to do with sharp thorns and Lyme disease? In this setting, you'd say nothing, right? A few sharp spines for this pretty purple spiked plant might be worth it. However, when this plant escapes into the woods, so begins the trouble. Once upon a time, there was a lovely, harmless Japanese barberry planted in a garden. This happy plant generated beautiful fruit containing seeds. The birds had a feast. Birds liked to fly into the woods. And next thing you know, our lovely Japanese barberry went wild and wasn't so harmless anymore. Like other invasive species that upset the natural ecosystem, Japanese barberry leaves out early and retains its leaves later in the fall than our natives. In addition, by increasing ground level cover and humidity, the Japanese barberry offspring improve the habitat for black-legged ticks and shelter for white-footed mice. This combination increases the risk for Lyme and other tick-borne diseases. Additionally, the thicket of Japanese barberry acts as a thorny wall, preventing the movement of wildlife, domestic animals, and people. During this video, we will discuss how to identify, report, and manage this enemy to woods and humans. Identifying Japanese barberry is straightforward. It is a medium-sized woody shrub three to six feet tall with curving branches and many painful, needle-like spines. The leaves are distinctive, small, rounded, and smoothed edge clusters near the spine. Importantly, cultivated Japanese barberry awfully has brightly colored leaves from green, lime green, gold, and maroon. However, naturalized plants spread through seeds tend to have only green leaves that turn orange and red in the autumn. Japanese barberry has small yellow flowers in spring. These produce enticing little reddish-orange oblong berries that hang off the branch. It is through this berry banquet that the trouble begins. The berries are dropped in the forest to take root and quietly start their devastating progression, eventually transforming a small thicket into an impenetrable wall. With its roots still growing, the branches also touch the ground, take root, and spread. Through these three offensive maneuvers, this plant can spread even more quickly, reinforcing its spiky wall. If you see Japanese barberry in the wild, help us by reporting it. There's an app for that the Great Lakes Early Detection Network app. It helps us when you capture your GPS location, snap a high-quality photo, and quickly report a new find through this easy app. You can also report through edmaps.org. If you find invasive species early and have only a few plants, the easiest management is to pull them or cut and treat them with herbicide. For a medium-sized infestation of Japanese barberry, you'll need more tools, including foliar spray in early spring or late fall when the native vegetation is dormant, a forestry mower, and high-intensity direct flame. For a high-level infestation, you will need to use a combination of tools over multiple years, possibly including a large forestry mower, herbicide application, and prescribed burning. For this level of infestation, reach out to your local natural resource professional. With a sustained surge, you can tear down the Japanese barberry wall, as evidenced by these before and after images. For your efforts to protect and improve our natural ecosystems and reduce the threats to human health, we sincerely thank you. Remember, we don't need to accept this invasive as a new normal. We're working together to fight this pest. <laughs>